Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema save Democrats from their own insanity. CNN reveals a major IQ drop by suggesting government place price controls on groceries. And the NCAA cracks the COVID narrative. Hello, I'm Mike Huckabee, and you're watching The Breakdown. <laughs> Democrat Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema are under intense pressure to vote to destroy the filibuster in order to support the Voting Rights Act, otherwise known as the Legalized Vote Fraud Act. Fortunately for America, these two appear to be the party's only actual remaining adults in the room, and they seem to be standing firm which will likely deal both of these naked power grabs by Chuck Schumer a handy defeat. Now, for the record, nobody's being suppressed from voting in America in 2022. It's easier to vote than it's ever been, ever. It's easier to vote under what Biden ludicrously called the Jim Crow voting laws in Georgia than it is in New York, or for that matter, in Joe Biden's home state of Delaware. And a recent nationwide Rasmussen survey found that more than 80% of voters support voter photo ID requirements, having all ballots received by election day, requiring voting machines to be made in the USA, and how about this one, removing dead people and those who have moved from voter rolls. Joe Manchin also tried reasoning with his angry fellow Democrats. He said of the attack on the filibuster, I just don't see how you break a rule to make a rule. And he said, we already have laws and rules in place to protect voting and nobody's gonna be obstructed from voting. That's not going to happen. Well, that worked about as well as trying to explain calculus to a rabid badger. And as for the filibuster, the Democrats have now started very creatively branding as the Jim Crow filibuster they didn't seem to think that it was a tool of white supremacy when they were the minority during Trump's final year. In 2020, Republicans used the filibuster one time. Democrats, well, they used it to block legislation 327 times. You heard me right, 327 times. I guess that was back in their racist days. Now, for all of their vilification of Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, those two are doing the party a huge service. They're protecting one of the strongest tools of the minority, which God willing, Chuck Schumer will soon be leading. I feel confident that he's gonna be the minority leader soon because we currently have, verifiably, the worst president in history in office right now. Joe Biden has had among the worst swings in poll numbers in all of American history. And part of that is due to inflation. We haven't seen inflation this bad in over 40 years. Another thing we haven't seen in years is a call for price controls, which is, by the way, having the government dictate how much sellers are allowed to charge for things like food and gas. Now, the reason we haven't heard about price control since the early 1970s is that it takes a long time for people to forget just how terrible an idea that price controls can be ordering producers and merchants to sell things for less than it costs to create them? Uh, quite frankly, that's a recipe for shortages in black markets. It's the type of idea that only sounds feasible inside the skulls of leftists who believe the ironclad law of supply and demand, much like biological gender, is nothing more than a social construct that you can change any way that you want just using your overactive imagination. So I'm not surprised at all that someone at CNN is floating the idea of price controls. Frankly, I wouldn't be at all surprised if the White House were to seriously consider it. It's almost like they have been challenged just to see how bad they can make their disapproval rating. Finally, there's been another little crack in the elite's COVID narrative. The NCAA has relented and they'll consider unvaccinated athletes who have had a documented case of COVID in the past 90 days as fully vaccinated. That way, these athletes can participate in the basketball playoffs. This may defy the continuing narrative that ignores the efficacy of natural immunity, but quite frankly, this makes sense. A recent study found that natural immunity provides 90% protection against previous versions of COVID and nearly 60% protection against reinfection with the Omicron variant. And that's still better than the protection that vaccination provides 
Natural immunity was also found to provide robust protection against hospitalization and death from all known variants. But why the 90-day limit? Another recent study found that while natural immunity does wane a bit over time, it's still protecting people better from reinfection and hospitalization than the vaccines, even when infection happened as long ago as March of 2020. Trending politics theorizes that this 90-day time frame still allows any athlete who tests positive in the next 90 days to play. And that'll save March Madness, which is the NCAA's biggest moneymaker. Even if so, in this case, following the money might actually result in the NCAA following the science better than some people who claim to follow the science are doing. If you want to keep following the news, you can subscribe to the channel below and click the notification bell. Be sure to leave a like and tell me what you think about ending the filibuster and government price controls in the comments below. And be sure to tune in for the live stream on Friday at 1 o'clock central. If you want more of my news analysis and commentary, sign up for my newsletter at mikehuckabee.com. It's completely free. You'll get it twice a day in your email inbox. Now that's going to do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.